Okay. I'm hearing you clearly. Um, are you hearing me? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Can, can you hear me? Uh, when, I'm not hearing you. All right, let me try the other phone again. Yeah, are you hearing me any clearer? Yes, it is very slow. But is there a problem you can turn up? Yes, I've turned it up. All right. Go ahead, please. Hold on. Tell me, do you hear me? I don't know. Well, I have no earphones, so huh? this is this is how it's going to be. All right. Good morning, Facebook fam. Good morning, YouTube fam. Good morning, LOR Radio fam. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, good tomorrow, wherever you are at this time. I pray that you receive the blessings that God wants you to receive. I wonder if I, if I turn it down, because there's a feedback. Hello, can you hear me? All right. So, good morning, everyone. Now, this morning, I'm talking to you, before I tell you the title, I was on the prayer line the other day, and Reverend Rose told about how her relative in California called her and asked her what she wanted, I think for breakfast or some, what she wanted to eat at any rate. And she was laughing about it because the relative lives in California and she lives in Pennsylvania. And so she laughed about it. She still said what she wanted, you know, and they laughed about it. She wasn't thinking anything really about it you know it's just okay she wants to know what i would like to eat haha -ha. um and then her doorbell rang and there was the food that she wanted well a door dash door dash had delivered it to her now let me ask you something what are you in need of and what do you need to be delivered to you Good morning, everyone. I, I don't see anyone right now. And, and I hope that LOR Radio fam can hear me. And um, let me, uh, I know some folks texted me to ask where I was. And so let's see. Oh, oh my goodness. Hold on one second. Um, one second. Let me just let them know I'm on. Okay. All right. So to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Um, let's see. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, So, okay, sorry about that pause. So we're talking about this morning, Heaven's Door Dashers. That's the title of this morning's message, Heaven's Door Dashers. And before the pause, I asked the question, what are you in need of? And what do you need to be delivered to you? The thing is, sons and daughters of God, we have door dash. Why? Because, and we have door dashers. Those are the people who bring the things that we ordered, whether it's groceries, medication, or food from a restaurant, whatever it is, they bring it swiftly to us, right? So it's called DoorDash. Now, when we send up prayers on behalf of 
our loved ones. Hallelujah, glory to God. When we send up prayers on behalf of ourselves and our loved ones, we're putting in requests to heaven, right? And God sends his door dashers to deliver no matter where in the world we are. It doesn't matter on what continent you are or I am. It doesn't matter what island you are on or I'm on. It doesn't matter where we're living or where we're visiting at the time that we send our request, right? It doesn't matter whether we're on the steepest mountain or in the deepest valley. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on one second, one, one more. Oh, just a pause, just a pause, just bear with me as, um, hallelujah, glory to God. It doesn't matter where we are. You see, we can be on the steepest mountain or in the deepest valley when we send that request for a door dasher. It could be the most rugged mountain terrain or the slipperiest valley. It can be the hottest part of the world or the coldest part of the world. He will deliver at no cost. You know why? See, you, one may have to be concerned about what the food's going to cost and then how much you're going to tip, right? I pray you tip them, right? Okay, so, but it doesn't matter what the cost is. Why? For us, because of Jesus, who is our original door dasher, by the way, he delivered salvation uh, and paid the price for every need, for every request that we would make. Huh? because of their great love for us. Hallelujah and glory to God. I don't know about you. It's rejoicing time this morning. Come on, sons and daughters of God. Good morning, sis. Good morning, Bishop, again. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, God, sons and daughters of God, God sends heaven's door dashers to deliver not just what we're asking for at times, but even more. See, the quality, you, you, it's one thing. You, have you ever ordered food from a restaurant that you're used to or you're not used to? The picture looks one way and you're thinking, man, this is going to be great. You get it and you're like, all right, this is the last time I'm ordering from this restaurant, right? Wait, God, though. We're never disappointed. It, he, he's better than those restaurants when you order. Like I've ordered from some restaurants. And my goodness, I'm like, wait. And then they became my fav favorite, right? Oh, yes. He's better than even that. Hallelujah, glory to God. The Bible tells us, and we know that we're blessed reading the word of God. We're blessed hearing the word of God being read. Proverbs, Psalm one. 107 and verse 20 tells us that he, God, sent his word uh, and healed them. And we know that he sent Jesus, right? Who was the word? John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word became flesh. Ha, hallelujah. He sent his word and healed them and delivered their lives from the grave. Yes, Danette, with God, we're never disappointed, girl. Man may disappoint us, but never with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says God sent his door dasher the word uh, who delivered the children of Israel from their graves. He does the same today for you and I. Hallelujah. How many can attest? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here are some examples of heaven's door dasher working, right? Ha, ah, praise the Lord. I'm going to read Acts of the Apostles 12, verses 3 through 19. 
and you are familiar many are familiar but for those who are not familiar at all this will be like you'll be what did that really happen yes and guess what if it happened for him it'll happen for you when herod saw how much this pleased the jewish people i'm not reading from the beginning you can go back and read it for yourself when herod saw how much this pleased the people he also he was arresting folks the children of god he also arrested peter this took place during the passover celebration then he imprisoned him placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each so four squads of four four times four we know how many soldiers but just one man four times four 16 how many soldiers there were right herod intended to bring peter out for public trial after the passover he had 16 soldiers guarding one man can you imagine he must have considered peter to be quite powerful my god hallelujah but while peter was in prison catch this part the church prayed very earnestly for him while peter was in prison the request was made for heaven's door dasher for God to send a door dasher, right? Peter, what was required with this request? Peter's freedom. Huh? Hallelujah, glory to God. And the Bible said, and he sent his word and delivered his life from destruction. Hallelujah, glory to God. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers others stood guard at the prison gate remember there were 16 so 14 are watching while two are chained to him my god but god hallelujah now suddenly and i love it suddenly there was a bright light in the cell see suddenly while the church was praying god sent heaven's door dashers and so hallelujah glory to god while who lord jesus an angel and who was this door dasher he was an angel of the lord he stood before peter the angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said quick get up and the chains fell off his wrist see when when god sends heaven's door dashers come on now some miracles are about to occur the chains fell off without anybody touching the chains because see when the presence of the lord when when god sends heaven's door dashers his presence is right there Woo! And whatever is holding you captive, whatever is holding you bound, have got to release you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Then the angel told him, get dressed, put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. And the, and the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. Ha! <laughs> See, when God sends heaven's door dashers to bring what you're requesting, it's going to be so spectacular. The thing is going to be so wonderful that you're going to say, wait, am I dreaming? Am I asleep? Pinch me someone, my Lord. See, he thought he was in a vision. He didn't actually, he didn't realize it was actually happening happening they passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city and this opened for them all by itself do you see what's happening when god sends heaven's door dashers the gate just like like that amen praise the lord so they passed through 
and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left him. Why? He was free. Hallelujah. Heaven's door dasher did his d duty. Uh, can we agree? When the, when the door dasher, when we order from the restaurant or you order your medication or you order from the pharmacy or Target or wherever, when they bring, the door dasher brings uh, 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 they, they, they speedily come to you they give it to you and then you have to you, you know you pay or you pay online sometimes if you're paying in cash you give it to them uh, I remembered when we were in Jamaica <laughs> uh, certain foods the KFC in Jamaica tastes better than the KFC in New York I can speak for that I tasted it myself. I did. The thing is, <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. The thing is, uh, to in Montego Bay, that KFC, you can wait in line for an hour. Now, I know if you're in New York, you're not waiting an hour for KFC. You're like, it's fast food, therefore it ought to be fast. But in Jamaica, KFC and uh, Pizza Hut, there's some lines. The lines wrap around. They go, you know, the, the sun is hot, but folks are still standing, still waiting, because we stand in line for good food. Uh, like that, that, that should be a topic, right? Oh, a t Bishop, a t shirt for the Word of God. Uh, hallelujah it's good food yes so I usually say I travel for good food I've driven to different states for food seriously for some pastries some bread yes I have driven to another state really I have uh, so listen we should be this dedicated to the Word of God I will travel Actually, I have traveled for the word of God too. Amen. Praise the Lord. But as I was saying, so the lines are long. Thank goodness I was with a local. Hey, Sir Patrick, my family, my friend. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Hello, Leanne. And so we, um, he said, we were with him. And he goes, uh, the kids were with us. And they wanted the, the young kids, the grandkids, and they wanted pizza. And so he said, hey, we just need one of those DoorDash guys. So he had a number. He called the guy. We went about doing what we had to do. And then the pizza came. Thing is, we didn't have to stand in the line that others were standing in. Now, we're, we're getting this, right? When we call on heaven, the Bible says we need to, what do we need to do? We need to praise the Lord, trust God, believe him that he is sending. We didn't know who the door dasher was. We didn't know him, but we trusted that because Sir Patrick called him, he was definitely going to bring the pizza, right? He was trusting that when he brought it, we would pay him and he was paid. The thing is, uh, you know, when we call on heaven, we ought to be, we ought to have, as the Bible says, have confident expectation that the God to whom we belong, the word of God also tells us before we call on him, he already has answered. So, when we put in that request while we're speaking he hears we ought to have confident expectation that our daddy god is going to come through so what do we do in the meantime just like you know we went to juicy beef we got some patties we sat we ate the patties we went to the store we went to the supermarket while the door dasher got the pizza you understand so to god be the glory when we send in our heavenly request, we just need to read our Bible, stand on the word of God, trust God, do pray for others who are going through the going through, right? Send up more requests. 
go visiting who we can visit do something good for someone in the meantime and in the between time and wait for our heavenly door dashers to bring what god has for us hallelujah glory to god so continue reading the word of god peter but hey wes how you doing sweetheart hey wendy how are you long time no see wes amen so listen peter finally came to his senses he was free have you ever has god ever done something so spectacular for you you thought you were in a dream and then you're like wait a minute this really is happening this has happened oh my goodness and we are celebrating we can celebrate before knowing that it can be so and so he said it's really true the lord has sent his angel here's the heavenly door dasher the lord has sent his angel and saved me from herod and from the jewish leaders the plan to do to me when he realized this he went to the home of mary the mother of john mark where many were gathered in prayer so they were still sending in requests uh, uh, i pray they were thanking god for sending re the request but listen listen he knocked at the door of the gate and a servant named rhoda came and opened it when she recognized peter's voice she was so overjoyed instead of opening the door she ran back inside and told everyone peter is standing at the door see heaven's door dasher came to the rescue and rescued him and there he was at their door but now unbelief has set in you're out of your mind they told her they said when she insisted they decided well it must be an angel it's not peter now how many of you can attest that listen when i send up my request to god when i send up my request to my heavenly about when i send up my request knowing that because of jesus he's going to do it um uh, i kind of don't believe it i'm like yeah i'm not sure if it's going to happen you know how we can tell because when we send up our request to god what do we do we go ahead and we start planning right well this is what i gotta do let's say we had a bill that was late and we're trusting god and we're like god i know you're gonna come through for me and then we're like you know what well let me go borrow some money now we put ourselves in debt we've disbelieved god and now we put ourselves in further debt right and, and, and then a whole host of things follow behind that but god so they didn't believe and that now they're like it must be an angel see sometimes the bible said we must have confident expectation in god meanwhile peter continued knocking when they finally opened the door and saw him they were amazed he motioned to them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. He said, tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said. And then he went to another place. At dawn, there was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. Herod Agrippa ordered a thorough search for him. When he couldn't be found, Herod interrogated the guards and sentenced them to death. You see? With heaven's door dashers, the sentence that was scheduled for you is going to go to the one who tried to sentence you. You remember Haman? Haman tried to annihilate all the Jews and he didn't realize that the king's wife was a Jew. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh, I love, oh hallelujah. Afterward, Herod left Judea to stay in Caesarea for a while. Listen, Peter's life was required to be set free and not to be put to death by heavenly door dashers that delivered the prayer request. My God, I wonder what request do you have? I wonder what heavenly door dasher will deliver your request today my god let the bible says let morning bring what word of your unfailing love hallelujah glory to god the thing is you never know what form 
our heavenly door dashers are going to take. It can be an angel. It can be birds. Well, you say birds, lady? What are you talking about? Yes, it can be birds. Hallelujah, glory to God. When Elijah was in hiding, because he had pronounced that there would be no rain to King Ahab, you know, right? You know, you know what happened. And his wife, anyway, but he pronounced that there would be no rain until his wife, uh, he's, he pronounced it to be so. Well, guess what happened? He had to be in hiding. Now, his heavenly door dasher, glory to God, turned out to be ravens sent by God. The Bible says, and you can read First King, that's First King chapter 17, verses 2 through 16. Well, you can read the whole thing because it's beautiful. But anyway, it's take, you can read it for yourself. But I'm going to read you. 1st Kings 17 verses 2 through 6. Then the Lord said to uh, Elijah, Go to the east and hide by Kerith Brook, near where it enters the Jordan bank. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring for you. For I have, command I have commanded you I've commanded them, them, notice plural, eat what the ravens bring to you, for I've commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kerith Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. Now, Listen to me, sons and daughters. It is very interesting, I find, that ravens are omnivores, right? They're omnivores, mean they eat carrion, they eat dead flesh, they eat, they also feed on live birds, nesting birds, eggs, they also eat berries, right? So I find it interesting that these ravens didn't consume wherever they got the bread from god ordered them do you see who god is sons and daughters of god don't limit god i pray today listen to me when you put in that request you don't limit god and his heavenly door dashers don't you know many times we ask what well, will god we ask for healing or we ask for money or we ask for just enough but we need to when we put in that request you know um bishop uh called me no no bishop was doing a, a a lot he did a live but i didn't even see the live i saw it after where bishop was showing his garden and i saw bishop so show some kalaloo and i said well where's mine i put it in the chat box now I remember the video had passed I put it in the chat box. There's a message. Come on, sons and daughters of God. I put it in the chat box. Bishop saw it and called me the next day. He says, hey, when you have a vehicle, I want you to come. Well, I didn't happen to get a vehicle for a couple of days. Where I went, now, when I saw Bishop's video, I didn't think it was that much. So I was thinking, I'll get a handful of stocks when he called me and call it a day. What I didn't realize was Bishop probably didn't show the entire, his entire arsenal of his beautiful. By the way, Bishop, did you see the picture I sent you? The very day I, I was passing the green gro one of the green grocers on Church Avenue, I saw them selling Kalaloo. I had to take a picture because there was nothing like the Kalaloo that I received, by the way. And Mommy Henry thanks you. Let me tell you something. Hey, Mama Henry, glory to God. Let me tell you something, sons and daughters of God. 
when I got there. Now, granted, I went. Okay, so sometimes the Lord will allow you to go. Okay, so I went. Mm. My blessings. I wish I could show you. When I chopped up all my kalalu, it was so fresh. A fresh mint, fresh seasoning, sons and daughters of God. It was more than I asked for, more than I imagined I would have received. I am telling you, you are sending the request to God. You may think it's late or stale. Uh, some of you have some dreams that you said, wait a minute, God, you gave me this dream. I'm now umpteen years old. When I say umpteen, maybe umpty numpty, right? It's not a word, but it is now, meaning you're advanced in age according to the world. You're like, the world's not going to accept me doing this at this stage of the game. God said, you don't worry about that. Let me worry about it. You think it's stale. You think it's late. You think God has forgotten. He didn't even see the request. He said, before you called, he already answered. While you were speaking, he heard you. Come on. I was, are you seeing how everything is? I'm, I'm like, I can't make this up. I didn't intend to. It just fell into Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm just saying, I'm thanking you. Oh, for my heavenly door dasher who's going to deliver whatever I might have asked for a long time ago, but just didn't receive it. Praise the Lord. No, not about you. I'm just going to praise God all day long. Start saying hallelujah, hallelujah. Who remembers when I said a thousand hallelujahs? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just start. See if you can do a thousand hallelujah. It's easy to do. It's easier than you think. Just keep praising the Lord. Glory to God. You'll count a thousand hallelujahs before you can imagine. Amen. Glory to God. It's the highest praise that you can give to God. So, as I said before, these birds, they eat carrion, right? They scavenge from predators. Uh, they even eat from human landfills. Yet, or I should say, but as heaven's door dasher ordered by God, they didn't even touch. They didn't eat the meal that was ordered for Elijah. They brought it straight to him. The Bible said they brought bread and meat to him daily. And he drank from the river. Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, when God, we, we must not limit God. We don't know who our door dashers are. But when God contracts our door dashers, they've got to follow that contract. See, they can't, they, they, they can't touch what we you know i remember in the past seeing I, I saw a report where people meals were being delivered and and delivery people would stop and eat out of it yeah not so with heaven's door dashers heaven's door dashers do not touch what god has assigned designed for us they don't touch it they can't touch it hallelujah glory to God. They have to bring it straight, unadulterated, who untarnished, who hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, praise your name, Jehovah, you are mighty and awesome, hallelujah, I glorify you, on behalf of the folks who are listening, and myself and our families, Lord God, we thank you, we have confident expectation that the requests we have made on behalf of ourselves and our loved ones, on behalf of those who are listening, because you know, I prayed for every person listening, hallelujah, glory to God, I thank you, Lord, for that heaven's door dasher, what heaven's door that you will bring to them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, glory to God. We're not limiting you, God. No, we're not. We just have confident expectation. Praise God. You see, not just birds, but we see the wind being a door dasher as well. And you're like the wind. Yes, the wind can be a door dasher. Has the wind ever blown money your way yet? Oh, anyway, listen. 
let me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going, this is the word of God. I'm not trying to make it up. God utilized the wind as a door dasher to bring me to the children of Israel when they were in the desert complaining about manna uh, sent from heaven. They crave the meat they need. They 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 used to have in 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 Egypt. Uh, Numbers eleven, Numbers eleven verses thirty one and thirty two. So that's thirty one through thirty two. Numbers eleven. Now the Lord sent a wind. Who sent the wind? The Lord. Here's the door dasher. What's he bringing? What's the wind bringing? That brought word of God right there. I'm not making it up. Go open your Bible and read it for yourself. Brought quail from the sea and let them fall all around the camp. For miles in every direction, there were quails flying about three feet from the ground. Like a child could reach up and catch a quail. Don't tell me what God can't do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the people went out and caught quail all that day and throughout the night and all through the next day too. Wait a minute. They asked for these quails. Quails came in abundance. What? All day, throughout the night, and all the next day. Two days. Two days. Listen. No one gathered less than 50 bushels of quails. Do you see when God sends his heavenly door dashers it's always more than enough and in this case it wasn't a good thing so they spread the quail all around the camp to dry now when you read beyond verse 32 because in the very next word it tells us that it didn't help them you see they were complaining had they been satisfied and I believe just the way God gave it to them. God said if earthly fathers who are no good can give, give, give good gifts, how much more our heavenly father? Listen to me. Had they been content, had they been even said, Daddy, thank you for the manna. Thank you for heavenly food. I kind of sort of miss eating some quail though. Can I get some quail, Daddy? You know, he would have sent the quail just the same and it wouldn't have killed them. Because the Bible said that they choked on it. They died and many were buried. Go read the next verse for yourself. So, the thing is, they rejected what God knew was good for them and craved what they used to eat while they're in bondage. There's a great message here, sons and daughters of God. There's so many messages within, listen. Once we've been delivered from sin, we shouldn't be craving to go back to our old ways. There are many who've been delivered from sin who still practice in witchcraft, still using crystals, still smudging, still going to the soothsayer. The Bible says, suffer the witch not to live. Not my word. The Bible said not to go to those people, the diviners, the evil people. Don't do it right many times as children of god we practice things that are cultural wearing certain beads to ward off um evil spirits and are wearing the evil eye as children of god can i ask you a question who is greater satan and his demons who by the way the bible tells us that there are demons that are imprisoned are we reading the word of god for ourselves who do you think have more power, Satan or God? He was created by God. So, just saying, just saying, it didn't work too well for them. And I'm quite sure it's not working too well for you. The evil eye, warded thingy, the hand or whatever, amulets you're wearing, the lucky rabbit's foot or whatever, is not going to work. Because the only true protector is God our Heavenly Father and the captain of the host of angels' armies. He has all power. Who remembers Elijah was sitting up on the hill? The king said, wait a minute. 
Why does that man know so much about my business? Who's telling him my business? Who's 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 thwarting? Who's causing the children of Israel to thwart my plans? People says, you know, it's the prophet of God. The king sent fifty of his army, you know, his best soldiers with one captain, and they go. And well, Elijah said. Unless I'm not a man of God. Was it Elijah or Elisha, Bishop? Well, one of the prophets of God. <laughs> it's getting a little blurred between them because they had a lot of miracles. He said, listen, unless I'm not a man of God, that you are coming to, what? He said, let fire come down and consume them. Poof, fire came. Door dashers brought the fire real fast. They did it a second time. Now, 102 people were consumed by fire. The third said, thank God. He had some wisdom. He said, listen, man of God, I'm, I'm begging you. Can you come down? Get mercy. I'm begging you mercy. Don't, don't burn us up. And go read for yourself what happens. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wasn't burnt up. Read for yourself what happens. The thing is, God is greater his power he is omnipotent he alone has all power mankind think we have some power we don't god just need to uh look away and say uh, okay do you want me to show you you have no power mm. god alone so the children of israel made the mistake we can learn from theirs huh let's be grateful when God does something for us. Let's learn to appreciate the new palette that God has given to us now that we've been delivered from sin. Let me ask you something. If you are used to eating something that made you sick and after going through illness, you may have spent a long time being sick and you finally discovered that was what was making you sick. You, you had to stop eating it. Are you going to go back and eat it again? I don't think so. Well, I wouldn't. So, listen. I just want to say here, heaven will always do what's best for us. Always. We should learn to trust our heavenly Abbas, our God in heaven, his omniscience. He knows everything. And all power belongs to him. Now, heaven's door dashers. So I've sh showed you through the word of God, heaven's door dashers being what? A couple of things. An angel, birds. They can also be fishes as well as people. So come with me. And I'm almost ending. Now, we know that when Peter, St. Peter, who the Lord sent an angel to deliver. When he and Jesus needed to pay their taxes, the door dasher was a fish who brought the money to for Peter to make the transaction, right? But when the widow needed to pay off her debt to save her sons, the door dasher was who? A man, man of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So let me read these two quickly. And we're getting there and almost to the end. Uh, Matthew 17, verses 24 through 27. Matthew 17, verses 24 through 27. After they arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple ta taxes tax approached Peter and asked, does your teacher pay the tax for the upkeep of the temple like the rest of us? Of course he does, Peter answered. We all know Peter was impetuous. Peter always spoke before he thought, right? But we've learned vicariously through Peter because Peter was one who was always asking some questions that we all wanted to ask, but we're afraid to ask because we don't want to look foolish. But Peter was the one who would jump out there. He was the one who also walked in water. So here we go again. So there he goes, and he spoke. He spoke for Jesus. So when Peter walked into the house, and before he had a chance to speak, Jesus spoke up and said, Peter, I have a question for you. See, 
Jesus knew. Peter, you just want to shut off your mouth again? All right. So Jesus just decided, listen, Peter, who pays tolls or taxes to a king? Is tax collected from the king's own children or from his subjects? See, Peter should have never answered. He should have said, well, let me just direct you to Jesus. How about you just go ask him? But anyway, nevertheless, so here he says, from his subjects. That's Peter answering. Jesus replied, that's right. The children get off free without paying taxes. But so that we don't offend them, go to the lake, throw out your hook, and the first fish that rises up will have a coin in its mouth. It will be the exact amount you need to pay the temple tax for both of us. You see, the door dasher fish brought just the right amount of money that was needed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let me go to Elijah, uh, 1 Kings 17, verses 8 through 16. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Now, here we find the door dasher going before we even hear about what the solution is. Do you now, now aren't you, listen, how can we not trust God? Here we're reading about the door dasher being sent ahead of what the request is. Now you understand when God says, before you've called, I've already answered. We're seeing it right here, sons and daughters of God. Oh, oh. All right, let me just read it for you. Read in your hearing. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you, but we're going to read closer and see what happened. Read more and see what happened. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water and a cup? As she was going to get it, he called her, bring me a bite of bread to eat too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jar. I was gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son, my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, you see the answer, here's another message. Huh? Some of you, before you asked God, God already sent the answer, but your eyes weren't open. How about just praying, Lord, open my eyes so I can know that this is the answer you've sent to me before I've asked the question. Because, um, yeah, many times God would send the answer. You, you ignore it or you wave it away because you said this is not God. And then you accept something that is not of God because the enemy of your soul has also sent the things to tort to hinder, to derail, but God, hallelujah. I just felt that in my spirit. I had to say, don't know who it's for, but to God be the glory, hallelujah, glory to God. So she said, uh, but Elijah said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a bread for me first. Now, I don't know about you, but how many of you, if you have your last thing to eat and somebody says, just give that to me. Let me eat it. You know, I remembered one day. Wasn't part of the message, but it is now. I was in church. <laughs> I had $25 left after I paid my tithe, my offering, paid my bills. $25 until the next paycheck i'm in church hear me and hear me clearly they were taking up an offering 
I'm going into my purse to give the $5 because I need the $20 to take a taxi to bring me and my three little boombies home. They were little ones. I had a baby, a toddler, and, you know, a, a young child. Let me tell you, I opened the purse to give the five. And the Lord said, give the 25. And I'm like, okay, Lord. So how am I getting home? <laughs> I'm in church, but there are many drivers. But I'm asking God, how am I getting home? That was a serious question for me. That I need to know. It was hot. I couldn't walk with all three. It was in one of those days. I have walked. We've walked, but that wasn't one of those days. And I heard, he didn't yell. He simply said, give it all. And it was so soothing and so, it was an order. <laughs> How else can I put it? So I did. I took out the 25 and I dropped it. Honestly service went on and i just was in the worship totally forgot towards the ending it came back to me wait a minute how are you getting home hear me and hear me clearly i didn't say a word to anyone i got to the lobby with the children and a brother may his soul rest in peace came to me and said, hey, I'll take you home. It was an older gentleman. He was like a, a father, you know, father figure, seriously. And so he said, I'll take you home. And I was like, okay, well, praise God. I was like, Lord, who you took care of the ride. And so he said, wait, I'm gonna get the car. He got the car, he brought the car. And he said, get in. Now, he is one. His name was Brother Roberts. He used to bring a lot of other people. But he said, I'm going to drop you. Come back and go do the other people. So he said, come now. Let me just take you guys. As we're going home, he reaches and he hands an envelope to me. He says, this is for you and your kids. But can I tell you, sons and daughters of God? It wasn't 100, it wasn't 200, it was more than. I say this to say, what if I had not given the 25 and just give the five? And it's not always a giving off money. It can be, maybe you're gonna eat something. I remember the day when the Lord told me, give the food that I had for my children to somebody who was eating out the garbage. And I'm like, but that's the dinner for my kids and myself. And the Lord was like, give it. And I gave it. When I tell you God is faithful and he always gives us more than we give away. And sometimes it's, he get, we get the same amount. Sometimes there are those times. But it's always a better quality or it's in, in abundance. Heaven's door dashers is the title of this morning's topic so he said to him to her don't be afraid go ahead and do just what i've said but make a little bread for me first then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son for this is what the lord the god of israel says excuse me Sorry, hold on. Sorry about that. This is what the Lord. This is what the Lord. Sorry. The God of Israel says there will be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Did you catch that? Not only. So this is during a drought. This is during her time of lack. They were just going to die. Huh? So she said, as Elijah said, so she did, sorry, as Elijah said, 
and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. So that was a promise. See, with this door dasher man of God, God sent her a promise. God sent life to a dead situation and lasting food and hope. This food lasted throughout the famine, but catch this, because did you catch that little part right there? Until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So while the crops are planted, the food was still being replenished. While the crops are growing, the food, food was still being replenished. When the crops was ready to be harvested, huh? it was the Lord sustained. This was replenishing food. My God, you know, the Lord said, prove me now and I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Heaven's door dashers. We've seen the wind as a door dasher, an angel as a door dasher, a fish as a door dasher, the ravens, birds as door dashers. God is God. You know, as I was reading the, the scripture in, in, in First Kings, I was reminded about Jeremiah 17 and 8. Hallelujah, glory to God. Where it says, But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. This woman who was on the verge of death trusted in the man of God that God had sent him to deliver her from death. He said he sent his word. He sends his man. He sends heaven's door dashers. And they come in many forms. She had confidence and hope. The Bible continues to say, they are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by the long months of drought. This woman didn't have to worry about the long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Sons and daughters of God. God said, as for the days of trees, so are we. My God. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Listen. We can absolutely trust God because he is the source for whatever we need. You see, we just have to put in the order. Hallelujah, glory to God. And we don't have to worry about its cost. We don't. You and I don't have to worry about its cost. Jesus already paid the price. Yes, he has. We just need to have an attitude huh, of hope in God, confidence in God. And as we're waiting, praise him. Trust him because he's trustworthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, to all those this morning who are physically hungry and thirsty, to all those this morning who are spiritually hungry and thirsty, to all those who have lost their homes or are, are on the verge of losing your home. To all those who are sick or those who are dying. To all those who are in stormy upheavals. To those who are imprisoned in jails or imprisoned in your minds. To those who are struggling financially. To those who need help judicially. To those who need a defender. To those who need some help in some way, shape or form, whatever you need, ask the one and only true and living provider. Ask 
the source of all good things, the one and only true and living God. He is the source of everything you'll ever need. He is the I am that I am. And he will send his heavenly door dashers with riches according to what he has in the, his kingdom. You see, when we send up requests to heaven, the abundance that's there will never run out. The more he takes, is the more it refills. Hallelujah, glory to God. I pray this morning that you, when you reach out to God, you trust him. And don't pigeonhole God. Don't put him in a box. Don't expect your door dasher to be whoever you think or whatever you think it should be. But trust God because he's shown us in his word that his heavenly door dasher can take any form, can be anyone or anything. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so know that he will deliver more than we can ask, think, or imagine. He is God. He is our creator and he is our heavenly Abba for those who belong to him. And if you don't belong to him, you're not excluded. You just need to say, hey, God, who are you? And I, I want to belong to you. I want to be one of your sons. I want to be. You know, the word says we become sons, uh, whether we're male or female. And so because of his son, Christ Jesus. So I would like to accept Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I, I want I want what, they're, what she's talking about. Because sons and daughters of God, I'm not trying to tell lies on God. I, I, I know that I know that I, I don't have to bring a word to anybody. I really don't. I could be selfish and say, Daddy, you just do for me. And just revel in what he does for me. But because I belong to him and because I know he's faithful, he's just, he's kind, there's only righteousness and goodness in him. Because I know how wonderful he is, I can't keep that to myself. I've got to share it with others. So I pray. If you haven't yet given your life to the Lord, or if you have backslidden, that you come to really get to know him, have a relationship with him, because I tell you what, baby, you will never, mm -mm, ha, it's the best thing you'll ever, best decision you'll ever make in your life in the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage everyone today, those who already belong to him, those who don't. And if you don't have a, the, a Bible, get the Bible app. Or you can Google this particular psalm that I'm going to give to you. It's Psalm 107. I, as I was reading this, let me tell you something. As I was reading this, I realized, wait a minute. I discovered that God himself, at times, is a door dasher for us. Hallelujah, glory to God. He is the wonderful door dasher, delivering wonderful goods. Hallelujah. Wonderful packages for whatever situation you may need. Read Psalm 107 today, sons and daughters of God, and see. For, and there wasn't a situation that God did not rescue, that God did not send a blessing, a help, or deliverance for so if you're going through something or if you're just having a wonderful day, well, think about heaven's door dasher bringing you even greater blessings. Huh? We can all benefit from heaven's door dashers. So I want to thank you, Reverend Rose, for talking about the door dasher situation because I told you I was going to bring a message on that. And so... Here is the message. To God be the glory. I pray today that each and everyone who needs something from the Lord will trust him that you'll receive whatever it is that you're asking for. And then have the confident expectation to know that he'll do you one better. Jamaicans would say, expect brata. 
Hallelujah. Have a blessed day, everyone. I love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves all of us so much more than we can ask, think, or imagine. His love is unfathomable. His love is unwavering. His love is unconditional. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have a blessed day, everyone. Love you guys. Take care. Thank you. And please share this message. It needs to reach the masses. I will also upload it to my YouTube channel, Flow, F-L-O, Changajita. So you can go to my YouTube channel and you can um, uh, share that with others who are not on Facebook. And Bishop did put his, uh, his, his, his t-shirt line there. So you can just click on that link and you can go straight there. And remember, I also am inviting you guys, you need to register. I have pinned a page on my, on my Facebook page and I put the link for you to register for the workshop starting July 2nd through August 6th, every Tuesday. It's uh, come, you will learn about housing and information about health and mental wellness. So it's not all, and let me tell you, it's very enlightening and very empowering. Last year's workshop, wonderful. This year, I look forward and I'm inviting you. Please remember to register. So go there, click on that link and register. If you're in Brooklyn, you can register. It's not, uh, we, we haven't gotten to the uh, place where we can uh, live stream or you know do that kind of workshop but by the grace of God we're getting there because we'll reach the masses hallelujah glory to God have a wonderful day everyone thank you Bishop uh, sorry about this I have to go get a new headphone guys all right take care <laughs>